Five, Mr. H.G. Wells and the Giants. We ought to see far enough into a hypocrite to see even his sincerity. We ought to be interested in that darkest and most real part of a man in which dwell not the vices that he does not display, but the virtues that he cannot. And the more we approach the problems of human history with this keen and piercing charity, the smaller and smaller space we shall allow to pure hypocrisy of any kind. The hypocrites shall not deceive us into thinking them saints, but neither shall they deceive us into thinking them hypocrites. And an increasing number of cases will crowd into our field of inquiry, uh, cases in which there is really no question of hypocrisy at all, cases in which people were so ingenious that they seemed absurd, and so absurd that they seemed disingenuous. There is one striking instance of an unfair charge of hypocrisy. It is always urged against the religious in the past as a point of inconsistency and duplicity that they combined a profession of almost crawling humility with a keen struggle for earthly success and considerable triumph in attaining it. It is felt as a piece of humbug that a man should be very punctilious in calling himself a miserable sinner and also very punctilious in calling himself King of France. But the truth is that there is no more conscious inconsistency between the humility of a Christian and the rapacity of a Christian than there is between the humility of a lover and the rapacity of a lover. The truth is that there are no things for which men will make such Herculean efforts as the things of which they know they are unworthy. There never was a man in love who did not declare that, if he strained every nerve to breaking, he was going to have his desire, and there never was a man in love who did not declare also that he ought not to have it. The whole secret of the practical success of Christendom lies in the Christian humility, however imperfectly fulfilled. For with the removal of all question of merit or payment, the soul is suddenly released for incredible voyages. If we ask a sane man how much he merits, his mind shrinks instinctively and instantaneously. It is doubtful whether he merits six feet of earth, but if you ask him what he can conquer, he can conquer the stars. Thus comes the thing called romance, a purely Christian product. A man cannot deserve adventures, he cannot earn dragons and hippogriffs. The medieval Europe which asserted humility gained romance. The civilization which gained romance has gained the habitual globe. How different the pagan and stoical feeling was from this has been admirably expressed in a famous quotation. Addison makes the great Stoics say...